Welcome back SOLIDWORKS users to this awesome tutorial where we are celebrating Deadpool's frequent fourth wall breaks in this four part series. We've successfully reworked Wade Wilson's head to be a sharp tool holder. In this final part of the series, let's add a few final touches in preparation for 3D printing. Recall in part three of the series, we created a bunch of wells in the top of Deadpool's head for some common drill bit sizes. I wanna add some recessed text to designate each drill bit size. So let's sketch on the angled top face on the left side of his head. Unhide the sketch used for the drill bit wells and let's draw a horizontal construction line from the center of each circle. I'm going to dimension these to be long enough for the text I'm using to clear the edge of each circle a bit, but you could just do this visually as well. Now navigate to the sketch text tool. Let's click on the line we sketched for the smallest drill bit and type in the drill bit size. In my case, this is a 1 16th inch diameter bit. You can use these buttons below to adjust the direction and orientation of the text. Then to select a different font, let's unselect the use document font option and click the font button. Choose your desired font. I'm going to make mine bold and I'm going to set the size of my font using units for the height of the font set to 0.1 inches but you can also use font point size if you'd rather control the size that way. Lastly, I'll position the text to hug the right side of the line. And I'll just repeat that for all of the other drill bit sizes. Once you're happy with the layout of the text, exit the sketch and navigate to the extruded cut tool. In the dropdown under from, let's select the surface face plane option and select the top surface of Deadpool's head. Ensure the direction of the extrusion is set properly and we'll do a 0.02 inch deep cut and click OK. Now the tools I'm planning to store in this tool holder are pretty lightweight so we don't need a bunch of counterweight on the bottom of the bust. So we can afford to hollow out the bottom quite a bit to save on material when 3D printing this. We'll create a uniquely shaped cut in the bottom of the bust using the boundary cut tool. So we need to first create two profiles in preparation for the boundary. Let's first sketch on the bottom face of the part. I want the wall thickness to be about 3 eighths of an inch thick after creating the cut. So let's use the offset entities tool to offset the outer edge of this bottom surface to the inside 0.375 inches. You may have to select or deselect the reverse option to offset this in the proper direction. Now, as you can tell, this enclosed sketch is made up of hundreds of small line segments. So let's convert these to a single spline by navigating to tools, spline tools, fit spline. Ensure the closed spline option is selected and simply highlight all of the edges to create the spline around. Let's exit this sketch. Now we'll create a reference plane for our second profile sketch. Navigate to reference geometry, plane, and select the bottom face of the part to create an offset plane. Set the proper offset direction and offset it two inches. Sketching on this new plane, just sketch a center point circle dimension to 2.25 inches. Exit the sketch and let's navigate to the boundary cut tool found in the features command manager. In the box under direction one, select both of the sketch profiles. Then you can adjust the control points that pop up to achieve a nice transition between the two profiles that doesn't twist. Initially, the boundary will create a linear transition between the two profiles. To create a nice curved transition, let's select the circular profile under direction one. And in this dropdown list, you can set a normal to constraint, which sets the start of this boundary normal to the sketch plane of this profile. And we can control the strength of this constraint until we're happy with how it follows the shape of the neck and shoulder area of the bust. In my case, I set the strength to 1.7 and achieved a fairly consistent wall thickness after creating the cut. And with the cut complete, let's just add a quarter inch fillet to the top inside edge of the cut. Now you don't necessarily have to go through the work of adding color to the model, but I'm a big fan of Deadpool's color scheme. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. 
first I'll add the base dark red color to the entire model. Then in order to add the complementary colors to the eyes and neck, you'll need to select each individual surface you'd like to color and drop in the desired color. This ultimately means you're clicking on a few hundred surfaces, so you have to be a little bit crazy in order to spend the time to go through this exercise. So I channeled Deadpool's crazy and went through applying materials and color to all of the eye and neck surfaces, and the results are pretty darn cool. I, for one, am super excited to print, finish, and paint this Deadpool tool holder, and I hope you are too. And I hope you walk away from this tutorial series, not only with some new tools in your tool belt for working with imported meshes in SolidWorks, but also with the comfort of knowing that the Merc with a mouth will be just fine after you stab his head with your sharpest work tools. Thanks for watching.